Before we start this video, a large thank you to Akumori, Stefan, Carter, Rob, Eric, Carlos, Jason, and Young. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, so go to your world network manager. Let's create a new component called Game Session Manager. The goal of this video will be to make it so two players can connect to one another and we want to sync our position in the world. So let's start by erasing start and update functions and drop in our namespace as is per tradition. Okay, that's good. Let's save that. And then let's go into the game session manager and write public static game session manager. I'm gonna call this instance. It's just a singleton. So if you wanna use the keyword singleton instead, you can go ahead and use that. I just like using the keyword instance. Just set it up however you like setting up your singletons. I like doing mine. We check for the instance. If it's null, the instance equals this. If not, then destroy this game object. All right, that's good. So right below that, I'm going to make a header now. I'm going to call this debug join uh, game session or just debug join game. I'm calling it debug because it's going to be deleted after we actually uh, input the real way to join a character mid game. But for now, this makes testing much faster and much more efficient. So serializable field bull start game as client and then a serializable field for a bull shutdown network. We have to shut down the network before we start it again as a client. So this just helps us do that. Now on the update, we're going to say if start game as clients, we're going to say start game as clients equal false. So we only run this logic one time. Then we're going to say network manager. In order to do that, though, we have to say using unity.netcode. Then we're going to access the singleton of our network manager. And then we're going to say start client. So network manager singleton dot start client. That's it. Now we're going to say right below that if shutdown network shutdown network is equal to false. So we only run this code one time. Then we say network manager dot singleton dot shutdown network. I believe it's called. Let's just see shutdown. So just shut down. And that is it. Okay, so we can save that now and we're already on our way. Obviously, Unity handles much of this stuff. So go to Peril Sync if you have it. Open your clones manager and create a new clone. This will duplicate the project as is before you open the clone or rather before you run the clone. Make sure you save any prefabs and any scenes that have been changed while being open. So also, if you find your players falling through the sky, you can see here I have an invisible plane put here at the zero zero position in my main menu scene. And I have the mesh render just disabled. This is so when it actually spawns the player, it doesn't just start falling very, very fast. Now, if I start the game, I can go in there and that always fine. But let's open up a second uh, client, so our clone. And let's go over here now. And if you go to my um, world session manager here, my world network manager, you can see this has a game session manager script, but my client is not because I didn't save this prefab. So let's save this prefab. And now if I go over here to the second client, you can see it's appeared over here. So likewise too, you want to save your scene if you haven't in a while, and then it will change over here. So anytime you make changes, basically just save it and it will appear on your clone too. So I'm going to start the game and I'm going to drag my clone over and start the game on this as well. I'm going to press start and hit new game. And then I'm going to go into the game and I'm going to click shut down network. And then after that, I'm going to click start game as client. And you can see, boom, I connected. And yes, we are in a co-op session. However, I can control two characters and we don't want that. Uh, and obviously the network position is not really synced. So meaning like my position on one game is not reflecting on the other game for either character. So we have to deal with that as well. So let's go to the player manager. And basically we only want to run this logic here on update if we are the owner. So we're gonna say, if we're not owner return and make sure you do this after base update, not before. So basically anything down here that involves our movement, we want to return if we are not the owner. And then likewise, let's go over here to the input handler here now, and we're going to utilize a function in Unity. Uh, I think it's called on application focus. Yeah. So. We're going to say right here, uh, if in this dot enabled as an, if this script is enabled, and then we're going to say, if focus is true, we want to say player controls dot enable. I think we called it something else. Yeah. So it's called input actions. I'm going to rename that player controls. This is just a preference. You don't need to do this. So I'm going to say player controls dot enable. And then if we're not focused, which means the program is minimized. I'm going to say player controls dot disable. What does this do? Well, basically this stops us from getting new input. If you minimize the window, which is almost completely necessary if you're testing with parallel sync, because you don't want to control uh, two clients at once with one set of controls. I'm going to make a comment here to really clarify that. It's also just nice because if you're playing the game and you have a second monitor when the game launches and let's say you want to go to your second monitor, you won't move or uh, mess with the controls of the game while you're on your second monitor. So, I'm just going to put a comment. If you minimize this game, disable further control input. If we reopen the window of this game, then enable the input. 
All right, so now if I go back into the game here now, you can see there's an is owner box on this character. This is my main game here now, and you can see it is a player object. So I'm just gonna open up another client to show you. So now I have the second client. I'm gonna join my main game here, my host. And now if I go to the host Unity window and I click this new player game object, like as in the one that's not me, you're going to see that it's going to say it is a player object, but I am not the owner of it. So I'm just trying to really nail home what it means when you're the owner of an object. This is not, this is my player model, this one right here. So this one's gonna say is owner. Now this other one that just joined here, this one right here, this one is not mine. You can see it is not the owner. So basically when we're saying is owner in terms of the player model, we're referencing if this is our player. Likewise, on this second screen here, this one is the owner because this is the local player. And this is the one I'm connected to, so this is not the owner. So just need to get you used to that. If you don't know uh, the concept of what that means when we're referencing that for players specifically, when we say, when we're asking if we are the owner in the terms of the player, what it's really asking technically is, is this the local player? Is this the player that's using this computer and not the person we're connecting to or some other person we're connecting to? So basically we have to make it so that if we're ever editing things like UI and all that stuff, we only want to do it if we are the owner because there's only one UI in the scene and only one camera in the scene. They should always go to the owner. All right, so let's make a new script here. I'm going to call this character network manager. This is going to house all of our network variables. And likewise, I'm going to make a player network manager and make it derive from character network manager too, because the player is going to have some different network uh, actions and say an AI. So there will be a lot of shared actions that'll go on the character network manager. I'm going to say using unity.netcodes, so we have access to the netcode libraries. And I'm going to go back into my project here. Now I'm going to add a new component to my player prefab. I'm going to call it player network manager. Going to open that up, delete the name, or sorry, the start and update function and add my namespace, as is per tradition. I'm going to make it derive, as I said before, from Character Network Manager. So what are we going to need on this script? Well, in this video, the goal is to get the world position and the rotation of the person you're connected to. So we're going to do that. We're just going to basically make a few variables here that will allow us to achieve uh, synced position and rotation. So let's make a header and call this network position. And we're going to need to make a network variable for this, our first one. So it'll be public network variable, and the type is going to be vector three. And we're gonna call that network position. It's gonna be equal to a new vector three network variable. So it'll be network variable vector three. And then we can open up some brackets here and say, we can initialize it at vector three as zero. And then there's some functions here that we have to, or some things we have to fill rather, network variable read permission dot everyone, and then network variable write permission dot owner. What does this mean? Well, it means anybody can read this and only the owner of this can change it. So basically a network variable works very simple. Uh, if the owner changes it, it updates for everybody's game object everywhere. So if your player model is in my game and on my game, I change my network position, then the network position on my model and your game will also change. Uh, if you want a very clear example of that, go check out my Elden Ring uh, series because I'm doing that code in that too, but I'm doing a real deep dive into the details of it. Uh, so let, next, let's make a public float for the network position smooth time. I'm um, initialize mine at 0.1f, and let's make a vector three for network velocity. That doesn't need to be a network variable. Uh, my bad, so just erase that, just a normal vector three. So the smooth time is how fast you want the network position to take over your character's actual position. Basically, you can't have it too slow because then it'll lag. But if you have it instant, it looks like you're kind of teleporting and choppily. So you want to make it like 0.1f. Also, let's make a new network variable for quaternion. And uh, let's just initialize this at quaternion.identity. The read and write permissions are the same and call it network rotation. Uh, if this is too fast for you guys, again, just let me know. And if you want a slowed down example, like I said, I encourage you to check out the Elden Ring in Unity series. It's uh, got a lot of helpful information if you're new to netcode. So I'm going to make a public float for network rotation smooth time, much like the smooth time up there. It's just how fast do you want the rotation from the network to be applied to your character. So let's go to the character manager now. And we're going to utilize the update function for this. And it's very simple. This is not a difficult thing to do at all. We're going to check over the owner. So if we are the owner of this object, we want to assign the network variable our uh, rotation and position. So first, let's call our character network manager. Let's make it public because this is probably going to be referenced in other scripts in the future here. And then on awake, let's say character network manager equals get component character network manager. So if we are the owner of this object, which means we have permission to write to network variables because you can only change network variables by default if you are the owner. So in the player's case, it would be if this object is our local player, 
in an AI sense, it will be if this object is owned by the server, but it's all the same. We're going to say character network manager dot network position is equal to transform dot position. Transform dot position being the transform and position of this game object, which is the character that the script is on. And then we're going to say character network manager dot network rotation dot value is equal to transform dot rotation. So the same thing, the rotation of this game object, this game object being the character that this script is attached to. And then we're going to say we give the network our position and rotation if we own it. If we don't own it, it's very simple. We just copy the rotation and position from the network and apply it to our game object. So basically, if I rotate 90 degrees on my end, I tell the network, and then you read it from the network and you rotate my game object in your game 90 degrees. So it's basically just a handshake, like whatever I do to my character in my game, I'm telling the network and then you can copy the network's information and apply it to the game object I have in your game. So the one that represents me. So we're gonna do that by saying transform.position equals vector three dot smooth damp transform.position, so the current transform to the target position, which again is character network manager dot network position dot value. And then we're gonna reference the character or sorry the network velocity which is just network velocity and then the smooth time which is again is the network position smooth time and this is kind of going off of the screen so i'm just going to space out a little bit so it's easier to read for you guys who are watching this but essentially it's just basically smoothing out the movement and we're just smooth damping it from whatever we're at right now to the movement position we need to be at from the network likewise we do the same thing for the rotation transform.rotation is equal and we're going to use uh, quaternion dot slurp and then we're going to pass our current rotation the target rotation and the time and obviously the time is going to be our rotation smooth time which is also a variable on our character network manager so it's actually a lot less scary when you break it down uh into small parts like this really it's straightforward very straightforward if you are the owner of your object you tell the network what your position rotation is and if you're not the owner that means that this object is appearing in someone else's game and it represents you then you copy your uh, position and rotation to that object. So let's go into the uh, update function. Make sure your player manager has base.update so it gets this logic on the character manager update. You can see here like this is very important, otherwise you won't sync your movement or pass your movement and rotation. And now let's save that and let's go to the world scene. And I'm just gonna, you can add the character network manager to the AI, but for now I'm just gonna disable him because if not, he's gonna give us an error. Obviously we have a lot to, uh, I'm gonna say, change in this project to make it work with netcode so we're gonna do one thing at a time starting with the movement and all the actions and all the good stuff so i'm gonna go back now to the player manager uh script and on late update i'm gonna say if is not owner return we don't want to edit anybody's input if we're not the owner that will be bad and i'm just gonna save that okay and now over here on the character locomotion manager I'm gonna say under update, if we're not the owner return, we don't need to check for a ground check uh, because regardless, if we start falling, our position will get synced and we'll send it to the other person anyway. So we don't need to know if this character is grounded. We don't need to keep track of those bulls. We just need to know the position and rotation. You don't need to sync everything is what I'm trying to say. You only wanna sync what you think you have to. Change character network manager to a network behavior. That's very important. Make sure it derives from network behavior. And now if you go into the game, you can see here that as I'm moving on the client, it's syncing. And as I move on the connected client to the host, it's syncing. So that works as intended. Now in the next episode, we're gonna work on animation sync so that whenever we play animation, it syncs across both. And we're also gonna probably sync up some other stuff as well too. We'll see what we can get done in the time allotted, but. If you guys made this far, as usual, would appreciate a like and a comment. I appreciate it. everyone takes time to do that so much. And a special thank you to my patrons. It's because of you guys I get to keep doing this. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And as, as always, regardless of all that, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next week.